Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. We've seen the cost minimum function, the input function in the previous video. Today we see two examples on that, two examples, right? Before starting the video, I would request you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, right? Yes. If you are interested in the videos, you are, uh, you've come here intentionally, so you can subscribe to the channel also, turn on the notification, the bell notification, so you'll get the notification when a video is uploaded. And if you have somehow ended up over here, you are not interested in watching any of my videos, so the thing is you can just subscribe to the channel and turn off the notifications. So good for me, better for you, right? Yes. So anyways, Example, let's say we talk about an example. Example number one, just give me a second. Okay, okay, nothing. Example number one is what? A thermal power station comprises of three units with the following cost model governing equations. So unit number one is a coal fired station. Unit number one is what? It's a coal fired station. And the model is given as H1. H1 is equal to what? 510 plus 7.2 P1 plus uh, 0, where is it? 0 0.0014, 0 0.0014 P1 squared. Unit number 2 is an oil fired steam station with the cost model H2 is 310 plus 7.82 P2 plus 0 0.00194 P2 squared and similarly the unit number 3 is also an oil fired station with the cost model H3 is 78 plus 7.97 P3 plus 0 0.00482 P3 squared. Now an economic limit is also given. An economic limit is also given, which is 150 to 600 for this one. 150 to 600 in terms of megawatts, right? Similarly, for P2, the limits are 100 to 400. And for P3, they are 150 to 600 in megawatts. Calculate the optimum power generated by each unit, which means P1, P2, P3 is unknown. For supplying energy at a minimum cost, so we will be following the previous video's procedure. To a load center with a demand of 850 megawatts. So the demand is 850 megawatts and assume the coal cost is 1.1 rupees per MBTU. So for coal you have X is 1.1 rupees per MBTU and for oil you have the cost is rupees 1 per MBTU. So what do we need first of all? First of all, we need is the objective function f, which is h times x. So we are given in terms of h, convert it to f by multiplying with x. So do the multiplication. So f1 would be what? This is a coal fired, so multiplied with 1.1. This comes out to be 561 plus 7.92 plus 0 0.014 multiply 1.1 gives you 0 0.001562 0 0.001562 p1 squared this has 
P1. Fine. Similarly, H2 and H3 are multiplied with X is equal to 1. So, the F2 is the same as H2 because it's multiplied 1, right? Similarly, F3 is the same as H3 because it's multiplied 1. F1 became different because it was H1 multiplied 1.1, right? Yes. So, this is, let's say, step number 0, you could say. You could say that this was step number 0 to convert H into F. Directly, you could also be given F, so you do not need a step number 0. The next step, step number 1, would be to take the derivatives. So, take the derivatives of each DF with respect to DP. So, DF1 with respect to DP1. So, this would be 7.92 plus 2 multiplied with this thing would come out to be what? 0 0.003124. 0 0.003124 P1. Then you have what? DF2 with respect to DP2. So, this would be 3 and 10 is constant. Then you have a 7.82 plus 2 multiplied 0 0.00194 would be what? 0 0.00388 0 0.00388 p2 and finally you have df3 with respect to dp3 and this would be this is constant so 0 7.97 plus 2 multiplied with this thing would come out to be 0 0.00964 0 0.00964 p3 right yes now we also had another conclusion that df dp was equal to what df dp this was equal to lambda where lambda is what lambda is the uh, incremental cost of electrical energy so df1 dp1 would give you lambda 1 df2 dp2 would give you lambda 2 df2 3p3 would give you lambda 3 now they are serving the same load center they are generating from the same generating station with different units the same coal is used the same fuel so what would be the cost the cost would be the same the cost would be the same so which means that delta lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 is equal to lambda 3 i would name it equal to lambda is that fine? It is. It is. Now, let's say I just name it that this was step number 0 where you found out what? The F function. Step number 1, you find out the derivatives. In step number 3, in step number 2, what do you have? In step number 2, what do you have? The power demand. The, all the powers would meet the power demand, which means we have P1 plus P2 plus p3 this has to become equal to the power demand yes yes so and where do these power values come from so they come from here p1 would be equal to what p1 would be lambda minus 7.92 divided by 0 0.003124 p2 would come from here lambda minus 7.82 divided by 0 0.00388 and p3 would come from here would be lambda minus 7.97 divided by 0 0.00964 so these are p1 p2 p3 so which means what put these values over here can you put them I will just write it again anyways 7.92 divided by 0 0.00388 plus lambda minus 7.82 divided by z uh, 3124 this one is 3124 0 0.00388 plus lambda minus 7.97 divided by 0 0.00964 and put it equal to 850 megawatts yes yes do the calculations do the calculations by yourself lambda comes out to be 
9.14 रुपीज पर मेगावाट पर मेगावाट आवर पर मेगावाट आवर हाउ डू यू फाइंड इट हाउ डू यू फाइंड इट सो वन अपॉन दिस थिंग लेमडा माइनस सेवन पॉइंट नाइन टू डिवाइड बाई दिस थिंग देन प्लस वन अपॉन दिस थिंग लेमडा माइनस सेवन पॉइंट एट टू डिवाइड बाई दिस थिंग प्लस लेमडा वन अपॉन दिस थिंग टू लेमडा माइनस सेवन पॉइंट नाइन सेवन यू नो द कैलकुलेशन यू कैन इवन डू इट मे बी थ्रू कैलकुलेटेड डायरेक्टली आई डोंट नो लेमडा इज नाइन पॉइंट वन फोर lambda has come equal to 9.14 now what can you do this was step number 2 step number 3 you can find the individual powers you can find the individual powers which means what p1 from this formula or i will write it over here step number 3 step number 3 would be over here so p1 would come out to be what put down the values put down the values 9.14 minus 7.92 divided by 0.00324 this comes out to be 393 megawatts 393.2 megawatts similarly for p2 put down the values by yourself and this comes out to be 334.6 334.6 Megawatt. Similarly, for P3, put down the values 9.1 for minus 7.97. This comes out to be 122.2, 122.2 megawatts. Is that fine? It is. Now have a look. If you have a look, so this lies in the economic limits. Have a look. 600. This lies 383. 100 to 400. This 334. 152. A six hundred. This is one twenty-two. No, this is not one fifty. This is not one fifty. These limits I have mentioned wrong over here. Fifty to two hundred are the limits. Fifty to two hundred are the limits. So have a look. These are also lying in the economic limits. So which means that we have found out P one, P two, and P three to meet the load demand eight fifty at the minimum cost possible. That is nine point one four. Is that fine? It is. now a question may arise what if what if it does not follow these economic limits first of all if the economic limits are not given you do the calculation whatever the answer may be summing it up would get you the the load demand 850 but if the if the economic limits are given then it should be in the economic limits over here it is fine it is in the economic limits but if it's not For instance, over here this 122, over here the limit was 150. So 150 was the minimum economic dispatch. It was less than that. So you put it equal to 150. You put P3 equal to 150 to be the minimum economic dispatch. You put P3 to that. And then what do you do for that P3? Find the value of lambda. And then you find the value of lambda. Then for that value of lambda, find P2 and P1. so you will have p1 p2 and p3 again if that is not the case if you are if you are having an overshoot for instance the maximum limit p1 is here 600 if you are getting over here is 700 which is greater than the maximum economic dispatch what do you do you set this p1 to the maximum level you put it to 600 then what do you do at p1 equal to 600 find the value of lambda and for that value of lambda find p2 and p3 right yes so we'll have this sort of an example not in this video let's say in this video we are we are doing what we are doing simpler examples right we are doing a simple example is that fine it is let me have one more example how much time have i taken 14 minutes so i can have one more example of course these examples take time The fuel cost models for a unit three unit thermal power station are given by. So example number two. F one is given. F is given directly. Okay, one seventy three point six one plus eight point six seven p one plus zero point double zero two three p one squared. F two is One eighty point six eight plus 
9.04 P2 plus 0.00238 P2 squared. F3 is 182.62 plus 9.19 P3 plus 0.00235 P3 squared. The economic limits are not given. The load demand is given as a load curve. The load demand is given as a load curve. I will draw it over here. I will draw it over here with respect to time. The power in megawatts, the power demand is given. So it's 200 for 10 hours. This is 200. Then you have 500 for the next 10 hours. This is 500. And then you have 300 for the next 4 hours. So, first of all, step number 0 was what? F is equal to H times X. You don't have a step number 0. You don't have a step number 0. Step number 1 is to find the derivatives. So, df1 with respect to dp1, df2 with respect to dp2, and df3 with respect to dp3. So, this would be 8.67 plus 2 multiplied 0 0.0023 would be what? 0 0.0046p1. 0.0046p1. Similarly, 9.04 plus 0 0.00476, 0.0476p2. And then finally, for the third, you have 9.19 plus 0.0047p3. Fine, this is step number one. In step number two, what do you have? You put p1, p2, p3. So, step number 2, I would write over here. P1 plus P2 plus P3 is equal to the load demand, which over here would be 200. So, this is for interval. The, the load curve now you have to divide into intervals. This is, let's say, interval A. This is interval B. This is interval C. So, in each interval, P1, P2, P3 would be different. Lambda would be different. Let's say, st till step number 2, this would be the same, right? Yes. So, P1 again, I told you over here, you can find from here. P1 is what? It would be, uh, and this is of course equal to lambda. This is of course equal to lambda. This one would be equal to lambda. Why? Because df dp is equal to lambda. This one would be equal to lambda. So, implies what? That P1 is lambda minus 8.67 divided by 0.0046. P2 is lambda minus 9.04 divided by 0.00476. P3 is lambda minus 9.19 divided by 0.0047. This is P1, P2, P3. Put the values over here, find the value of lambda. Can you not do it? You can do it. What is the value of lambda? The value of lambda is 9.27. 9.27 rate per megawatt hours. Fine. Yes, this was step number two. Step number three, what do you do? You find the values of P1, P2 and P3 by putting in these equations. So P1 would be 9.27 minus 8.67 divided by 0.0046. P1 comes out to be 131.95 megawatts. 131.95 megawatts. Similarly, you put for P2, you put it in this formula, it comes out to be 49.79. 
49.79 megawatts you put p3 in this formula comes out to be 18.51 megawatts 18.51 megawatts now you don't have any economic limits as the previous example so you don't have anything to worry about right yes this is example number one and this one is example number two now what do you have this was lambda and p1 p2 p3 for the first interval a now for the second interval b what would be the case the case would be you have the same dfdp you have the same f and you have the same formulas for p the the difference comes from where from step number two we are now p1 plus p2 plus p3 this would be equal to 500 this would not be equal to 200 right yes so please do the calculations uh, i will do it with you now this one we will do together let's say lambda minus 8.67 divided by 0 0.0046 plus lambda minus 9.04 divided by 0 0.00476 plus lambda minus 9.19 divided by 0 0.0047 and this is equal to what this is now equal to 500 is that fine it is what next what do you do next is you do the calculations i will do the calculations over here by myself let's say this would just take a little time but let's see we do it together let's see we do it together where is the calculator okay so i told you what would you have is this is one divided by 0 0.0046 46 yes yes 217.39 217.4 lambda minus 8.67 upon this thing 8.67 divided by 0 0.0046 1884.78 1884.78 plus 1 upon 0 0.00467 476 210.08 uh, and then this is lambda minus I'll do the calculations listen to the azan as well 9.04 upon this thing 9.04 divided by 0 0.00476 1899 Point one six plus one divided by zero point double zero four seven is two twelve point seven six lambda minus nine point one nine divided by zero point double zero four seven one nine five five point three one is equal to 500 lambda lambda 217.4 plus 210 .08, 212.76 640.24 lambda minus 1884 plus 184.78 plus 1899.16 plus 1955.31 5739 0.25 and this is equal to 500 uh, and what do you have is add 500 to this this comes oh, oh wait 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 i made a mistake for 500 plus 5739.25 this comes out to be 6239.5 6239.5 and then divided by what this thing 
divide it by 640.24 so lambda comes out to be 9.74 9.74 so for the interval 2 now you've got your uh, uh, lambda now what do you have is you you can calculate p1 p2 and p3 according to this so p1 would be what this would be 9.74 minus 8.67 divided by 0.0046 so let me do it 9.74 minus uh, 8.67 and what this is 1.07 divided by 0.0046 so this is 232.6 232.6 megawatts similarly for p2 what do you do you do it the same way 9.74 minus 9.04 and this thing divided by 0 0.00476 this is 1.147.05 similarly p3 p3 would be what 9.74 minus 9 9.19 and this divided by 0 0.0047 this is 117.02 117.02 so this is the case if you sum these all if you sum these all these have to give you the load demand have a look 232.6 plus 147.05 plus 117.02 of course you could have an error similarly if you sum these up if you sum these up for instance 131.95 uh, plus 149.79 uh, plus 18.51 so have a look 200.25 the required is 200 right yes so this is how you do it this is how you do it similarly you can do what in the similar way in the similar way you can do for the interval c and the interval c what do you have you will put p1 plus p2 plus p3 equal to 300 and and for this find the calculate uh, value of lambda and then find the value of p1 p2 and p3 accordingly let me know in the comment section this is a homework for you to find the value of lambda in the homework and p1 p2 p3 i need it in the comment section right yes this is it over here i will see you in the next video with whatever the topic may be till then take care goodbye